The arrival of Hazel has definitely caused a lot of discussions within the community, and there's a few important things that I want to address in this video. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Displate. Now, Displate offers high-quality prints on metal that help you showcase what you're passionate about, and I've been personally decorating my home with them for a few years now. Now, I recently got myself a couple of new Displates. They always arrive in this exciting packaging, and what I love most about them is how easy it is to set them up by using their really safe and simple magnet mounting system. And there's tons of brands Displate covers I'm passionate about. I love reading manga and comic books. I also really enjoyed Squid Game back when I first saw it, and of course, who could forget classics like the Avatar animation. But yeah, a lot of awesome prints to choose from, and it's really easy to move them around thanks to the magnet system, and I honestly think it's a really good alternative to the usual paper and canvas prints. So make sure to use my link in the description and get a really good discount for a limited time only. If you buy one or two displays, you get 25% off, or if you buy three or more, you get 29% off, and in addition, for each display you purchase, a tree gets planted. Most importantly, you'll also help support my channel with future videos, so make sure to check out Displayed now. It's kind of weird if you think about it. All of the Inazuma 4 stars before Heizo were either really niche or kind of unclear if they were waiting for the Sumeru to buff them. So I think it's fair to say that we were getting conditions to lower our expectations about all the Inazuma 4 stars. And yet, somehow, Hoyoverse decided to release Heizo, who is actually pretty strong even at C0, which is honestly not something a lot of us expected to happen, given the past track record I've just mentioned. And here's the thing, up until this video I spent about a week in the media server testing him exclusively at C0, and then another week when I raised him to C6, all the while keeping tabs on everyone's thoughts in the community to see if we can all come to some general consensus. And the results? Well, it seems like a lot of you love his playstyle and that one-punch man damage he can do, but at the same time, there are some things that need to be considered about him. Like, first of all, as someone who despises the word influencer, it's still something that I do. And let me tell you, most of content creators, we based our assumptions by running Hazel through the Abyss cycle that he got introduced in the first week. And the problem with this Abyss was that pretty much almost every chamber was working against him, and enhanced his problems to a degree that wasn't really necessary. For example, the first side had Whopper Flowers, who had crazy low stagger resistance and bounce around easily from his skill, which also happens to be the same problem with Geovisha Brothers here, although they don't move away that much after taking damage. So when I was talking about his problem with Knockback, I did spend a lot of time on this side of the chamber, and it kind of had an effect on me. Now on the other side of the chamber, the Ruin Guard spawned alone, so you couldn't see things like Swirl or Taser being effective. Then in the next chamber, Cryo Slimes wouldn't take damage from Swirls, since it infuses with Cryo and they are immune to it, so in the end, the only chamber that kind of worked nicely to see his potential was the one with two Bathysmal Bishops. That's it, really. So I kind of believe this previous Abyss Cycle had an effect on many people's opinions since the only real place you can evaluate a character is this place right here. But what about the new Abyss Cycle? Well, it's definitely better for him. Both sides of the first chamber have multiple enemies who can abuse with the swirls and his damage. The second chamber's second side, believe it or not, is actually extremely good for him when using his taser comp. And even the final third chamber, especially the first side, can be easily cleared. <laughs> While the second side with the giant ruined serpent... Well, I'll say this, it's not Hazo doing the heavy lifting, but his teammates, if you use his shiny new Double Hydro Taser team comp, which I'll talk about in my future video. Obviously, the footage I'm showing here has units like Kazuha with Freedom Sworn, but I've already proven multiple times in my previous video that you can build free-to-play teams with him and still clear the Abyss. So, yeah, I think at least for me personally, when I test a new character, it's always easy to see their damage potential and just random overworld targets you choose to torture, but the only real deal in the game that puts someone like Heizo through relevant evaluation is the Abyss. Which, in this case, that previous cycle wasn't really doing any justice for him. Which is fine, because the nature of the Abyss cycles is that they are better for some characters than others. And it just so happened to be that Heizo got released with a really unfun and kind of unfair Abyss cycle. However, the next thing I want to talk about is the future potential. Or to be more clear, what do I think about him at C6 and how much of an impact his constellations will have? Since after asking you guys about it, it seems we kind of have an even distribution of players, who either have him at C0, have some constellations unlocked, or just don't have him at all. Almost splitting these groups of people into equal thirds. But let me show you something I have discovered about Hazel's constellations, and then I will also talk about his place in our so-called current meta. 
Real quick, let me just tell you that almost every single constellation you unlock for Hazel is a small quality of life upgrade with some damage sprinkled on top of it and this can lead to a nice compounding effect. Like, I wanna say when I played through the newest Abyss rotation multiple times, using him both at C0 and C6, I could see about 7 to 12 second improved clear times, which in my opinion is pretty impressive. This obviously depends on your account's artifacts and other units you've built, but the two teams I've tested, which was the Double Pyro Animo and Taser Double Hydro, actually felt like I could do more with him once I moved from C0 to C6. Now you could argue and say, well, that core team of Benny, Xiongling and Kazaha doesn't even need him, and you'd be right. It's pretty much busted on its own. So I went ahead and just did a run without him, which led to about 9 seconds longer to finish the chamber without Hazo. However, once I plugged in all of his constellations, now it would take about 15 to 17 seconds longer to finish without him. So I think, even in a busted team, he is promising enough. And I was actually surprised that his first constellation felt to me the most impactful, at least when I consider his playstyle, because now, when you switch to him, he gains a declension stack, which not only makes it easier to reach his skills full damage faster, but there's also some new neat little tricks you can do. Like, he can now easily reach all four stacks by just doing a couple of charge attacks off of someone like Benny's skill or burst, which previously would have left them at three stacks instead. Also, for five seconds, he gains 15% attack speed, which is just icing on the taser cake, since this allows him to unload Xing Chou's, Yelan's, and Beidou's bursts faster. But what I wasn't happy about was his second constellation. The only thing that changes here is the burst, which can now pull in some of the units it couldn't pull in before. However, the vacuum does have larger range compared to Kazuha's skill, although it is much weaker. I would say this upgrade gives you just enough crowd control, so you can position his skill easier on the enemies who just shuffled around, but otherwise just don't expect much from this crowd control he offers. The remaining constellation which also slightly improves his functionality is the fourth one, and it's just a neat way to reduce his energy recharge by basically letting him forget you ever need it. Or if you're very conservative, you can now just get it up to 110% and call it a day. And all you have to do is just hit four targets and cause an elemental infusion from the burst to regain all the energy you are allowed from this constellation upgrade. Finally, his C3 constellation improves his skill damage by about 18%, his C5 improves his burst damage also by 18%, while the final constellation when compared to C0 improves the skill damage by a total of 33% or 13% if going from C3 to C6. And if I'm not mistaken and I got my numbers right, combining all the upgraded damage from his burst and skill, he gains about 28% overall damage increase. This is kind of nice, although I will say his final constellation also gives 16% critical rate for his skill, which I think is really, really important if you hate to see all that build up leading to a non-critical attack. Like seriously, I've had him at 90% critical rate and he would still miss the crit, which is like where the majority of his damage comes from. So having this opportunity to just straight up increase his crit helps a lot with getting more enjoyment out of him. And you can be more relaxed on maintaining the critical rate. But as I said before, I really felt like his C6 performance is impactful enough for the Abyss, and I expect as time goes on, those who stick with him and continue unlocking more of his constellations will notice the difference too. I wouldn't say any of these constellations are game-changing, like getting C1 on Sucrose, C2 on Kujosara, or C6 on Xingqiu, and so on. They just simply exist. In the grand scheme of things to help him become a better one punch man. But at the same time, this also means he is a great and fun unit at C0 if you enjoy his playstyle, and going all the way to C6 eventually leads to faster and better skill damage, less energy you need to worry about, and a bit more crowd control that otherwise isn't going to be important for anyone else besides him. So after spending a lot of time both with C0 and C6 Hazo, I believe the only thing that will hold him back in the future will be similar units power creeping him with better damage, if that ever happens. Since he can still provide many of the valuable things you want from an Animo unit, maybe aside from good grouping. Like, he doesn't really change that much when unlocking constellations one by one, aside from the first one that actually has impact on his playstyle. But even then, it's like these constellations are just made with a single intent to help you focus more on his skill damage. And I think Hoyovers knew exactly what they were doing here. Because I've been reading comments about him on my videos for the past week, and I can see that the majority of you are just excited to see a cool new character that can deliver a powerful punch. Now, the big question is, since I have his full potential unlocked, do I think he's better or worse compared to other animal units? Honestly, like, really, 
really honestly? Well, when comparing him at C6 to Sucrose, who I also have at C6, she objectively remains better than him at several things like grouping enemies and providing better elemental mastery boost. The same could be also said about Venti or Kazuha at C0, maybe besides the EM boosting, but come on. We've seen so many niche and unpopular Inazuma 4 stars released by this point that I'm just surprised to see Heizo actually working so well. Even with all the so-called flaws pointed out, I really think at C6 he actually becomes a decent meta unit for several popular teams. And I think those who are now pulling for Kazuha and don't have Sucrose or Venti, you can actually use the two animal units you obtain for the Abyss. Do I wish he had better damage multipliers in both these normal attacks and burst? Sure. But then again, I'm also just happy that he's a versatile unit, partially thanks to the fact he is from the animal element and also uses the catalyst. To be frank, the biggest thing that I look forward to when experiencing each new unit is whether or not I'm able to build new teams, or at least teams that provide some sort of a new playstyle, because that's how I perceive fun. Not long ago, Yelong came out, and now I'm having a blast with several team comps that utilize double hydro with Xingqiu, teams like Funerational, or just putting in Diluc or Yoimiya makes the game feel more fresh. And I think Heizo actually achieves this single-handedly all by himself. There's really no new teams you can build with him, maybe besides double hydro Taser, since he's literally just a swap-in for popular comps like National or Taser. However, when he is swapped in, I can feel the difference in the way I approach combat, and I'm loving it, especially with the whole twist Hoyoverse went with and gave a catalyst user melee attacks. So yeah, getting his constellations feels great, it's not a game changer, but enough to help him get a nice performance boost for the Abyss, and he definitely doesn't surpass the golden animo trio of Sucrose, Venti, and Kazuha, but at the same time, it's not that big of a deal, as long as you understand his limits. At the end of the day, the first thing you always want to do before committing to any new character is to go check out their trial, and I believe Hazel's trial does represent him pretty accurately, so first decide if you actually appreciate his playstyle, since not everyone may enjoy the way he rolls with the punches. But if you do like to punch the life out of your foes, damn, the gameplay is just so satisfying. Anyway, I hope you liked the video, and if you did, you can always support my channel by subscribing to it and leaving a like on this video. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.